Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us and welcome to this live stream event. Happy Friday. Um, we're here to tell you all about the Department for Transport's consultation on the Bus Services Act. My name is Neil McClure from ODI Leeds. Hi, and I'm Mira Naya from Department for Transport. Um, so um, we're taking forward the Bus Safe and Data Programme and also the Accessible Information Programme too. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you can hear us and see us on the live stream. Um, we're going to spend the next uh, approximately 25 to 30 minutes um, or so uh, talking you through some of the pre-information for the consultation process. Um, we're going to roughly follow this agenda, this schedule, which hopefully you can see. Uh, we've done our welcome and introductions. The next thing is we're going to give you a little bit of information about how you can contribute to the process, as well as some of the means by which we're giving you information and, and sharing some of our comms. Um, we'll talk you uh, through a little bit about the programme of events that we'll be running over the course of the next few weeks. Um, we'll also be telling you how you can contribute. So as well as attending the face-to-face -face events, there'll also be other ways for you to contribute too. Uh, following that, Mira is going to talk us through a little bit about the key themes that are coming in the consultation for both the bus, uh, sorry, both the bus open data and the accessible information um, legislation. And, and, and that'll be us. Um, so to start with, there are many ways that you can get involved with this consultation process. Um, hopefully, you have um, seen some of the information so far, but we have created on the ODI Leeds website a hub page which we are using uh, to host and give to you information about this consultation process. That link is behind me there. It's on the ODI Leeds um, website, odileads.org slash events slash all aboard. Um, we've got all the information that you will need uh, both before, during and after those events. So please do click that link, have a look around and you can find the information. As well as that, um, you can get involved via Twitter. The department have just recently launched a new Twitter channel, which is at Bus Open Data. Uh, so that just went live yesterday uh, in, uh, in alignment with the start of the consultation itself. So do follow that, do get involved um, and do, do continue to um, to be involved in the debate about bus open data. Um, of course, ODI Leads, we have our own um, Twitter channels too, so follow us and stay up to date on information about the Bus uh, Services Act consultation and other programs. Uh, and please use the hashtag all aboard throughout the consultation process to stay in touch with us. Finally, um, the department have launched a smart survey of which the link is there, smartsurvey.co.uk slash s slash bus open data. Um, so you'll be able to uh, see more information and contribute to the consultation process there too. I've got a screenshot here of our website that I mentioned before. Um, this is what it looks like. We're not going to do any live demos because um, they almost certainly fail. So this is what you'll see when you go to it. I would encourage you to click the link, have a look around, find out some information, sign up for events, um, and that is where we'll be sharing bits and pieces of information with you, which we'll talk about a little bit in this live stream. In terms of the events, after this, um, we go on a bit of a tour across England. So we're, over the course of the next two weeks, Mira, myself, and the rest of the ODI leads and DFT teams will be having four face-to-face -face events. On Tuesday, the 10th of July, we start in Leeds. Um, on the Thursday of that week, so Thursday the 12th, we're in Milton Keynes at the Transport Systems Catapult at the Pinnacle there. And then the following week, we've got a further two events. First of all, on Tuesday the 17th in Birmingham at the iCentrum. And then secondly, on Thursday the 19th, our final event in Bristol at the Watershed. Hopefully, if you've managed to see this live stream, you will have heard about these events and maybe even signed up. Um, so we look forward to seeing all of you there at those events. In terms of those events, what we'd encourage you is to sign up to attend just one of those events because all of those events are going to be identical in how we run them. Uh, as we mentioned right at the start of the live stream, we're covering two aspects of the Bus Services Act. First is bus urban data and the second is accessible information. 
So each of our events will follow a part A in the morning and part B in the afternoon sort of structure. Part A will be just about open data. So we'll have a bit of a brief welcome and introductions. We'll have a couple of lightning speakers, which is um, a common thing for any of you who've been to any of our ODI Leeds events before. And then we'll get into a facilitated consultation session. We'll split the, the, the group into a smaller number um, of equal size groups where you will all get the, the opportunity to contribute to each of the different themes and sections of the draft consultation documents. So we will we'll facilitate that process and make sure everyone gets equal time to contribute to all of the different parts. Um, I mentioned those consultation documents. Um, following this live stream, we'll make available those draft consultation documents um, for you so that you can see um, the content that's in there. And we would like to invite all the people who are attending a face-to-face -face event to have a read through and get familiar with the content that's in those consultation docs before you attend those events. It really helps us to make sure that everyone's on a level playing field um, and that people are able to contribute and feedback on what's in those documents. As I mentioned before, part B will be about accessible information. So we'll run an identical um, process for the afternoon. Welcome and introductions, a couple of short lightning talks, followed by a facilitated um, consultation process where we'll rotate the group around and get feedback on the consultation. Finally, um, in terms of how you can contribute, as I mentioned, we're having those four face-to-face -face events. Um, in addition, we've got a couple of other ways you can contribute to the consultation on our website. Um, we'll be uh, running or making available some collaborative documents, which will be Google Docs. So please do feel free to um, put your thoughts and your comments and your feedback into those docs. I showed you the link before to the smart survey that the DFT have set up. Um, that will be available on there as well. And there'll be other ways that you can contribute to the process. I'm going to hand over to Mira now, who will tell you a little bit about the consultation process, how it's going to work, and then give you a little bit of a summary of the, the themes of the consultation too. Hey, um, so hello. Um, so um, first of all, we're really excited. Um, we've just launched a public consultation for um, improving information for bus passengers, which, as Neil says, includes both bus open data and um, accessible information as well and um, we really feel like this is a good news story for the department and for um, the, the um, for England, Scotland and Wales as a whole. Um, we feel like these are two parts of the Bus Services Act that can really deliver some tangible benefits um, for passengers um, and we're really looking forward to seeing you all over the next few weeks um, at the various consultation events and hearing what you think about the policy proposals that we want to share with you. Um, so as Neil said, um, we officially launched the, um, the consultation yesterday at Reading Buses, um, so the 5th of July, and our Buses Minister, Nujrat Ghani, who you can see in the image, um, came along to, to, to launch that consultation. Um, we were really happy to be at Reading Buses. Um, we see Reading Buses really leading the way in two areas, both open data and accessibility. Um, from an open data perspective, for quite a long time now, Reading Buses have um, embraced open data opportunities. So they've worked um, collaboratively with the university and with innovators, data innovators there. Um, they've recently developed, um, set up their own tech hub to um, essentially um, co-locate um, tech and, and data innovators and the bus operator themselves and, and really help um, innovate within the bus industry. So we see that as, um, you know, an ex uh, see Reading Buses as an exemplar, really. Um, and also, um, just speaking to the accessible information regulations as well, um, Reading Buses are a leader in accessibility too. Um, one of the things they're quite well known for are their colour coded buses and you know as well as being quite a, a nice marketable device it actually makes it really easy for um, people who are blind visually impaired um, to differentiate between buses and services um, so um, reading buses was a, um, an obvious choice for the launch of the consultation um, as Neil said, um, there's a number of different ways you can contribute. Um, so first of all, we've got um, a series of events um, starting from next week, which um, I think Neil's taking you through the details there, so I won't run through those again, but we hope to see you there. We've got capacity to see about 60 of you at each event. Um, so if you haven't signed up, do sign up, but please only come to one um, because um, you, the, the format will be the same at each event. And um, 
once it, it, essentially if you take more than one place you're taking a place off someone else um, so come along to the events we've got the collaboration document so if you're um, if you're not able to make it to the events or if you come along but some of your colleagues can't come along the collaboration documents are a really great way to get involved without actually being physically present um, We've got the online survey as well. Um, so, um, and I should note that it's hosted on the um, on the the, um, the gov.uk consultation page for bus open data. Um, so, if you um, and, and there is also a parallel for accessible information. So, if you just type gov.uk bus open data or gov.uk accessible information, you'll be taken to the relevant consultation page, and you'll find the documents and the survey. So, you can read everything that you need to read there, and then you can respond to the questions through the survey. Um, you can also email your responses as well. So we've got two mailboxes, one for bus open data. So it's just bus open data at dft.gov.uk. So hopefully that's really easy to remember. And we've got one for accessible information. That's bus accessible info at dft.gov.uk. Um, so you can just send um, a free text response um, via email to those inboxes. And if for any reason you um, struggle with digital channels, then um, we do also have traditional paper-based responses. So um, if you, um, you, you, um, you can request a paper-based form from us, um, or you could go to the web page and print it out and send it back to us. Um, but I would encourage you to try and embrace the digital channels, which are quite often easier to work with than the paper-based channels. OK, and um, just to take you through the themes and give you a flavor of what you can expect, um, so we've got 11 themes for bus open data. Um, so um, uh, the, the first theme is really more of a background or a scene setting um, theme, and that's just about how we, co it's, we call it the as is. So how we currently offer bus data at the moment. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with bus data, you'll know that route and timetable data is quite open, real time information is patchy, and fares and tickets data is not open. So there'll be a bit of a discussion around that. We'll talk about the distributed data model, which is the, the department's proposal really for opening up bus data. Um, so this is really where we put the onus on bus operators to open up their own data, and the, the department, um, central government, and to some extent local government will facilitate that and, and, and support that process, but not necessarily deliver the process themselves. Um, we'll talk to you a little bit about route and timetable information and the proposals there, um, including the standards that we, we, we think we should be working with, um, the timescales by which we'd want to require that information, um, and who should be responsible for providing it. So, so that's the kind of thing we'll talk to you about. Fares and tickets, again, um, similar questions that will explore standards by when, by who, um, and real-time information too. So we'll, we'll talk to you about that. And it's really important that you know, we get the detail right here. So we do really want to have a debate and a discussion with you about it. Um, also got this, um, a theme here about the information about the operation of service. So this is essentially a theme about is, it, uh, uh, is there anything else that we need to capture? Um, so other types of data that might be useful are things like punctuality or accessibility. Um, so um, we want to have a really open discussion with you and, and uh, get your views on that too. Uh, we've got information about bus stops, so, 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 so NAPTAN data for those of you who are um, already in the buses world. Um, is basically data about bus stops and we just want to talk about our, our views and thoughts as to how bus stop data could be um, not necessarily opened up because it's already open but maybe about how it could be um, actively maintained and who the responsibility sits with to do that um, and then we've got some discussions to have around tools and training so what support do we need to offer to the bus industry and or local authorities to to move into this world of bus open data and um, use and disclosure of information. So, so once the data is open up, opened up, what, what, what are we using it for? Um, and then a couple of other themes around quality assurance. So um, who, who, um, who, who, who takes the lead on quality assurance and the best routes and methods to, to um, assure that data? And then compliance and enforcement and just a bit of a discussion around um, how, how far we go down the compliance and enforcement route. Um, and so, so they're the key themes for bus open data. Um, and then moving on to accessible information. Um, so um, again, um, we've got a number of different themes here. We'll start off by doing some scene setting. Um, the first um, couple of themes, both accessible information on board local bus services and the legislative and non-legislative options are really scene setting. Um, 
sections um, and just to give you some of the context and history and, and, and explain to you how we got to here today, the point of, of having the consultation, the point at which we're having the consultation. And then we'll talk about the types of information to be provided, so, so why we decided on audio and visual data. Um, we'll talk about the timing of information provision. So, um, and I think probably the, the really important point to note about accessible information is the department isn't looking to regulate or mandate a, spe a specific type of technology. What we are looking to do is specify a standard for information provision. So um, the timing points at which information should be provided, the quality of information and what needs to be included in that information for audiovisual to work or accessible information to work. But the, the, the decision about the type of technology is one for the bus operator. And so I think each of those sections, four, five and six, really um, really linked to that point about the standard of information um, we do look at the use of technology and I guess the, the interesting point to note here is we said that um, the, the provision of accessible information should not be reliant upon a, a passenger owning a smart device um, and so that's the kind of thing that we'll discover in the, um, that we'll discuss in the use of technology section we'll talk about the use of exemptions and um, so we do have exemption making powers for um, the accessible information regulations and we'll talk about which categories of bus service are exempt um, and get your views on that too um, we'll talk about the implementation time scales so um, I guess the, the key point to note is we're proposing smaller operators wouldn't be exempt and um, we will just have a, a longer lead time and so um, that's the, the, the discussion we want to have with you there um, and then a little bit about guidance for operators so um, what you think would need to be included to, in, in, in some practical guidance for operators to make it work compliance and enforcement um, which really talks about the sanctions and penalties that are available um, to the department for non-compliant operators and when we would need to invoke those and then also extended the regulations so and I guess the key point to note is accessible information is um, Great Britain wide so it covers England, Scotland and Wales which is different to other parts of the bus services act so we'll discuss that too and then finally there's um, a discussion on the impact assessment um, which um, is different to bus open data because the impact assessment was developed um, during the primary legislation phase for bus open data, whereas it's been developed at the secondary legislation phase for um, accessible information. So we're, we're really keen to see, to get your views on that too. In terms of um, <clears throat> next steps then, for the consultation itself, as Mira mentioned, um, the consultation will be running um, through until the 16th of September. Um, so you will have the opportunity to contribute uh, in the ways we mentioned before, up until and including that date. Following that, um, in December um, 2018, the department will be issuing their consultation response. Um, so there are some key uh, milestones to work towards. Looking, bringing it back a little bit more um, near term uh, with regards to this program of events, we've quickly rattled through uh, the key events and milestones and ways to contribute um, to this to this program of events. Um, the next things that will happen are obviously our four face-to-face -face events happening over the next two weeks. Please, as Mira said, do sign up if you haven't already. If you have signed up, we look forward to seeing you at one of those events. The day before or so, you will get um, some more information about joining. So things like um, car parking, where exactly um, what the best transport links are, um, some more information about timings, etc., etc. So keep an eye out for that. As we mentioned before, we'll be publishing more information on our um, website hub page, odileads.org slash events slash all aboard. Um, what we'll also be doing is we'll be making available to you those consultation documents. As said before, if you're coming to one of those events, if you can, please do have a look through those consultation documents in advance of your face-to-face -face events. And if you have any thoughts or feedback or comments, drop those in the collaborative docs, which again, we'll be linking to on our website hub page. And the final point is, thank you for joining this live stream. We recorded it, so we'll be making a link to this recording of the live stream on the website hub page and these slides as well. So rather than remembering the, uh, all the links that we've rattled through, you can just click the links by seeing the slides in there as well. So we look forward to uh, meeting you and seeing you at one of our events. 
Thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. Go and enjoy the sunny Friday and the restart of the World Cup, the quarterfinals. Come on, England. Um, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>